Hi guys, today I will be reading another document from the CIA Freedom, Freedom of Information Act release documents on the CIA website. I read these so that you guys can get this information without necessarily having to stop and sit down and read. I think this information is so important to get out to the public and this is my contribution in making it more readily available. Now, the paper that I'm reading uh, today is very lengthy. It's probably going to take about four hours approximately to get through. So I am going to break it up in stages. Uh, depending on how it goes, I will title the videos part one, part two, part three, ever how many parts it takes um, so that you can come back and finish once I upload additional segments. The title of this document is super exciting to me. It's called Psychic Warfare, Exploring the Mind Frontier. Uh, it was generated, I believe it was 1988 this was done, and it was generated by a Lieutenant Colonel Dolan McKelvey of the U.S. Air Force. It's a research report submitted to the faculty in the fulfillment of the research requirement at Maxwell Air Force Base in Alabama. It starts with the table of contents and a disclaimer, basically saying that these are not the pers these are not the views of the Air Force; they're the personal views of the individual who created this paper. So I'm going to start at the beginning with the introduction, and here comes the reading: Psychic Warfare, Exploring the Mind Frontier. Man's greatest potential remains a prisoner of man. Only a fraction of the human mind is currently used. Limitless mental capabilities are just waiting to be accepted, developed, and understood. With this tremendous power comes an entirely new battlefield dimension, which, if ignored, poses a threat to self and country more serious than nuclear weapons. This tremendous threat starts from within. Our fears and cynical attitudes towards psychic capabilities make us our own worst enemies. Coordinated military exploration of the mind frontier is essential and key to successful exploration is a greater awareness of psychic phenomena. To support this thesis, I will examine some of the mind's greatest treasures, discuss their potential use and feasibility as instruments of power, highlight major self-imposed obstacles to developing extended mental capabilities, and recommend future actions. In December 1980, Lieutenant Colonel John B. Alexander, U.S. Army, authored an article in Military Review entitled, The New Mental Battlefield, Beam Me Up, Spock. In this article, he challenged the imagination of his readers when he stated, begin quote, to be more specific, there are weapons systems that operate on the power of the mind and whose lethal capacity has already been demonstrated, end quote. He discussed psychotronic weaponry and provided eye-opening unclassified information on both Soviet and American research into parapsychological phenomena. He concluded, the impact that psychotronic weaponry and other paranormal applications will have in the future is difficult to determine at this time. Whoever makes the first major breakthrough in this field will have a quantum lead over his opponent an advantage similar to sole possession of nuclear weapons. The intent here is to emphasize the need for more coordinated research in the realm of the paranormal. Additionally, there is a need to provide leaders at all levels with a basic understanding of weapon systems they may encounter in the not too distant future. A response came almost immediately. In January 1981, columnist Jack Anderson of the Washington Post was quick to demonstrate American skepticism of psychic research in an article entitled Pentagon Invades Buck Rogers Turf. <laughs> Anderson's one-sided derogatory prose was filled with terms like futuristic fantasies, hogwash, and voodoo warfare. A month later, Anderson was back reinforcing psychic, psychic skepticism. This time he began, the brass hats are indeed dabbling in the dark arts. Other carefully chosen phrases included evil eye, comic strip, Ouija board warriors, and voodoo warriors arsenal. Within weeks, he returned to the subject by referring to, quote, wacky projects of the CIA or studies like a Haitian witch doctor might try. 
McLean's magazine reported in 1981 that President Reagan and Defense Secretary Weinberger had to decide, and I quote, oh, I'm sorry, this paper skipped a page. McLean's magazine reported in 1981 that President Reagan and Defense Secretary Weinberger had to decide whether to continue funding the top secret project, which, according to Jack Anderson of the Washington Post, is currently allotted $6 million annually. Between 1981 and 1984, numerous articles appeared in periodicals revealing an astonishing amount of research in the psychic field and reflecting great skepticism amongst the scientific community. In January 1984, columnist George Hebert wrote an article entitled, and I quote, it looks like the, he began a sentence, so we pick up in the middle. But a peak at ESP is justified, end quote in a Norfolk, Virginia newspaper. He focused attention on U.S. Defense Department denials that the government was supporting psychic research. He suggested and hoped the denials were based on security concerns. Even as a skeptic, he noted, if, on the other hand, the denial reflects a true military disinterest in the psychic possibilities, our own and the Soviet Union's, that would be a reason for worry. An NBC Nightline program in 1984 discussed the possibility of mind wars. Researchers, scientists, and government consultants were interviewed. Especially noteworthy was the general skepticism of government advisors compared with the positive convictions of researchers. And most recently, in the 11 May 1987 issue of Newsweek, Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Claiborne Pell invited psychic Yuri Geller for a reception and dinner in Geneva during Soviet arms negotiations. He had previously arranged for Geller to give a briefing on Capitol Hill in a special bug-proof room. Most of the spectators were Hill and Pentagon aides. House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Dante Faskell came away impressed. Was Lieutenant Colonel Alexander's message taken seriously? Is the Defense Department conducting more coordinated parapsychology research? Do leaders at all levels have a basic understanding of these psychic weapon systems we may soon encounter? What is the potential threat to the electronic components which form the basic foundation of all our sophisticated weapon systems? In light of future Defense Department funding limitations, does parapsychology, also known as the mind frontier, really offer a new battlefield dimension which warrants continued military exploration? This paper attempts to answer these questions by providing an unclassified status update on Lt. Col. Alexander's 1980 concerns. It is not a research report to identify everything the government is doing. By researching events and literature in the 1980s, particularly those involving military personnel and government programs, this paper shows that too much is happening in the parapsychology field to ignore and too little information is disseminated to know how to treat it properly. Section 2. Defining Parapsychology Paranormal phenomena are observable facts or events which are not scientifically explainable at this time. Psychic research includes such phenomena as telepathy, which is mind-to-mind communication, precognition, which is knowledge of future events, dowsing, which is the clairvoyant ability to find water, minerals, and so on by means beyond known sensory or perceptual faculties, remote viewing or out-of-body experiences, which is seeing locations, objects, or events shielded from ordinary perception in a spatial location separate from one's physical body, and psychokinesis, which is movement of matter by mental means without using any known physical force. These types of psychic functioning are also referred to as psi, which they spell PSI, which is frequently preferred by researchers to dispel the misconception that these abilities are outside the realm of normal human experience. Researchers contend psychic functioning quote, occurs naturally in the everyday experience of people, end quote. Psi is further subdivided into two categories. The term extrasensory perception, or ESP, refers to telepathy, dowsing, precognition, and remote viewing, while the term PK refers to psychokinesis. 
Psychotronics is the term used to describe the amplification of psychic energies by electronic devices. The first recorded experiment of Psy involved a military intelligence application of remote viewing. Back in 550 BC, King Croesus of Lydia felt threatened by the increasing power of the Persians. He needed to know what they were planning. Historians give us a detailed account of just what happened. Croesus sought an oracle who could somehow perceive his enemy's plans, an oracle with proven psychic abilities. So he devised a simple test. He dispatched messengers throughout the ancient world to visit different oracles and ask for a written description of, of Croesus's activities at a specific time and day. The oracle at Delphi responded, I can count the sands and I can measure the ocean. I have ears for the silent and know what the dumb man nameth. Lo, on my sense there striketh the smell of a shell-covered tortoise, boiling now on a fire with the flesh of a lamb and a cauldron. Brass is the vessel below, and brass is the cover above it. Only the Delphi Oracle provided the correct response, for on the specified day, Croesus did something he thought most impossible for anyone to conceive of his doing. He took a tortoise and a lamb, and cutting them in pieces with his own hands, boiled them both together in a brazen cauldron, covered over with a lid that was also brass. Croesus's 550 BC experiment convinced him remote viewing worked, at least for the Delphi Oracle, and provided him a significant intelligence force multiplier against his Persian enemies. How far have we advanced since then? Next section, discovering the mind's great treasures. In over 2,500 years since Croesus' first Psy experiment, it is amazing that people still know so little about this subject. Paranormal experiences occur daily throughout the world. They are nothing new, nor are they limited to particular types of individuals. Our mind contains boundless capabilities just waiting to be recognized, used, and understood. We all accept and share at least some common understanding of this vast mental potential. We have all heard statements such as, think positive. Sayings such as this are based on our acceptance of the notion that our mental attitude can directly affect the outcome of events. Opinions vary, however, on just how great an impact a mental attitude can have and under what circumstances it can have such an impact. When we look around us, we can all recall personal experiences or those of others who have experienced some type of paranormal event. These events demonstrate the reality of the untapped potential of the human mind. The truth is that most people are interested in psychic experiments because they are having them. Have you ever heard about dowsing to find water? An old dowser used a tree branch to help some friends determine well to drill for water on their mountain property. Contrary to geologists' recommendations, he not only picked the right spot, but accurately predicted how deep the drillers would have to drill and how many gallons of water per minute the well would provide. Are you skeptical? According to the June 1983 Congressional Research Service report, the Soviets claim that scientific studies of dowsing have yielded significant results. Accordingly, dowsing is taught to professional mineralogists and geologists at Tomsk Polytechnical Institute. The report goes on to say, quote, dowsing or divining for water, oil, and other minerals is an established practice in this country and abroad, particularly in the Soviet Union, end quote. And what about the healing stories? Researchers and ordinary people around the world are witnessing and experiencing faith healings, psychic surgery, and miracles. Of course, there are frauds, but at the same time, countless numbers of people have been helped. Practitioners of holistic medicine and other healthcare specialists are exploring and using many of these dormant mental capabilities. The mind frontier is rich with resources beyond our imaginations. Many adventurous and courageous people have already penetrated portions of this region and are using their newly developed talents. A scientific understanding of how these gifts work continues to elude us. Soviet researchers and a few Western researchers think innate signals are transmitted via some type of radio wave, perhaps extremely low frequencies. 
U.S. physicist Russell Targ invented the ultra-high power carbon dioxide laser and is a specialist in microwave and plasma research. He also conducted psychic research at the Stanford Research Institute, SRI, for years and is known as one of the prominent experts of psychic research. He thinks the reasons more people have not actively explored their psychic capabilities are clear. Everywhere we look, we find images of psychic functioning that are confusing, intimidating, misleading, and terrifying. Meanwhile, critics of Psy, who often know next to nothing about Psy research, condemn the scientific work in this field out of fear of its philosophical implications. To date, paranormal events are unexplainable in man's view of nature. Much controversy exists as organized science and Western society quickly try to explain away very real paranormal events. The psychic community needs proof based on logical, analytical, and quantitative analysis. Such scientific approaches to psychic research always leave room for skepticism to question the valid validity of conclusions. Yet, as someone once succinctly noted, quote, just because it can't be proven doesn't mean it isn't so, end quote. Croesus was convinced he didn't let lack of understanding prevent him from taking advantage of the capability. This highly skeptical Western attitude has greatly affected research efforts. Western researchers' credibility is jeopardized because of the spiritual undertones associated with psychics. Jack Anderson's 1981 columns on, quote, voodoo warfare clearly demonstrated a cynical attitude by labeling such research as crazy. But in response to his columns, letters poured in from general populace supporting the research. Through greater public awareness, by 1984, even Jack Anderson was shaking, changing his tune, quote, but there are legitimate laboratory projects that may eventually unlock the mysteries of the human mind. One of the most promising is the testing of remote viewing, the claimed ability of some psychics to describe scenes thousands of miles away, end quote. Much of the skepticism and cynicism is generated from within the scientific community itself. In Ronald McRae's 1984 book, Mind Wars, the author describes several examples of the scientific community's inability to deal with the unknown and how, in our society, the prevailing concept defines what research is acceptable and what isn't, which laboratories will enjoy the patronage of the Pope in Galileo's time or the government today, who is published and who isn't. Parapsychology, for the most part, is and isn't publication of parapsychology papers in the major scientific journals is rare. Of course, not all scientists are skeptics constrained by prevailing concepts. Captain Edgar D. Mitchell, an astronaut on the Apollo 14 space flight to the moon, holds a Doctor of Science degree in aeronautics, aeronautics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He conducted ESP tests on that space mission in February 1971. In the early 1980s, during an interview with Martin Eben, author of Psychic Warfare, Threat or Illusion, Captain Mitchell commented, quote, during the intervening years, my work, as well as the work of parapsychology in general, has convinced me that the human organism is capable of all of the events we study in parapsychology. I have established this to my own satisfaction, if not fully to the satisfaction of all skeptics, end quote. During the exploding technological revolution, the eminent computer scientist A.M. Turing considers the question that the only discernible difference between a human being and a computer may be that the latter cannot experience psi. Similarly, pioneer computer researcher doc Dr. Jacques Vallée stated, my contention is that machines will be able to think by any human standard that can be precisely defined. But as the machines get smarter by these rational standards, it is the definition of humanness that will change. I think we will discover beyond these rational standards that the human race has many other psychic talents we had previously been afraid to recognize, talents which constitute our truly genuine existence as humans. They are the only part of us worth talking about, end quote. I tend to agree, sir. That's my part. Back to the, back to the paper. 
Dr. Robert Davies is medical director of Fair Oaks Hospital in Summit, New Jersey, where he has studied neurologic and psychiatric illness for many years. In 1986, when discussing ESP, he said, quote, too many things like this happen for it to be just coincidence. The commonalities that appear in many of these reports suggest that there may be some common physical basis, end quote. This common physical basis is what researchers are trying to determine. But to develop a scientific explanation of these events may require new principles in physics. Skeptics and cynics will always be present. Some skepticism is crucial to the scientific study of parapsychology. Skeptics are valuable when they recognize the reality of psychic phenomena, help expose con artists, and provide objective criticism to help us better understand paranormal events. Cynics, on the other hand, are biased and closed-minded, trying to make nature change itself, to conform to their concept of the universe. In spite of personal skepticism, McRae points out, quote, the opinions of the many eminent scientists in both nations who believe parapsychology research may lead to fundamental new discoveries cannot be ignored, end quote. The other nation he is referring to is the Soviet Union. Soviet threat. With these tremendous expanded mental capabilities comes an equally awesome threat to both self and country, one which stretches the imagination far beyond its normal boundaries. Martin Eben cites a U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency report entitled Controlled Offensive Behavior USSR, which was declassified eight years ago ahead of, I'm sorry, eight years ahead of schedule. The report states, quote, the Soviet Union is well aware of the benefits and applications of parapsychology research. Many scientists, U.S. and Soviet, feel that parapsychology can be harnessed to create conditions where one can alter or manipulate the minds of others. The major impetus behind the Soviet drive to harness the possible capabilities of telepathic communication, telekinetics, and bionics are said to come from the Soviet military and the KGB, end quote. Eben uses extensive research to provide an in-depth account of parapsychology research in both the Soviet Union and the United States. In noting the dramatic increase in KGB security and control of Soviet parapsychology research, he concludes that, quote, psychic warfare is something to fear, end quote. After returning from a visit to the Soviet Union as a guest of the USSR Academy of Sciences in September 1983, Russell Targ wrote, quote, Many Soviet laboratories appear to be conducting experiments in which their main goal is the modification of the behavior and feelings of remote humans and animals by psychic means, end quote. In, summaring, in summarizing his travels from Moscow to Leningrad to Yerevan and his discussions with Soviet researchers, he notes, quote, they universally expressed the feeling that size importance lies in the development of human potential not in its possible military or intelligence applications, but everyone we talked with also made some oblique reference to what we were not being shown, end quote. In 1978, Henry Griss and William Dick in The New Soviet Psychic Discoveries, which is a book, provided a wealth of firsthand data on Soviet breakthroughs in parapsychology and related fields. From this information, they presented an eye-opening, inescapable conclusion that the Kremlin was ready to adopt psychic knowledge for military use. They also reported on tests conducted by the CIA in 1973 involving two noted U.S. psychics. Quote, in controlled tests, the psychics projected their minds over long distances, apparently accurately describing super-secret military installations and even the contents of confidential files in these bases. During one experiment, Price described in minute detail a Soviet installation hidden in the Ural Mountains. CIA agents in Russia confirmed his description. The two psychics spied on China and once again, ground truth agents, CIA contacts in the People's Republic, were able to confirm their accuracy, end quote. 
Retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Thomas E. Bearden was a master of science, has a master of science degree in nuclear engineering with over 29 years experience in air defense system tactics and operations, technical military intelligence, nuclear weapons employment, anti-radiation missile countermeasures, tube artillery, and air defense missile systems. He also directed the production of U.S. Army technical intelligence on Soviet surface-to-air missile systems. In his 1980 book called Excalibur Briefing, he describes psychotronic weapons in detail along with a mind-boggling hypothesis. He believes, quote, that by psychotronics, the minds of all men can be linked into a great supermind having absolute psychokinetic mastery over time and space. End quote. Whew. Sorry, I got to breathe after that sentence. Holy cow. Hmm. The basis for his sense of urgency lies in a non-conventional interpretation of two important statements. Like Gris and Dick, he points to a statement made by Soviet Premier Leonid Brezhnev on 13 June 1973. Quote, he urged the United States to agree to a ban on research and development of new kinds of weapons more terrifying than existing nuclear weapons. The reason and conscience of humanity dictate the necessity of erecting an insurmountable barrier to the development of such weapons, end quote. Bearden also cites a comment made in the mid-1970s by former Air Force Chief of Intelligence Major General George J. Keegan, quote, The Soviets are working on dramatically exotic new weapons 20 years ahead of anything ever conceived in the U.S., so awesome as to lead the Soviets to believe that in the coming decade they would be capable of total neutralization of our ballistic and submarine missiles, end quote. Bearden feels these terrifying weapons are psychotronic or paraphysical in nature. In 1986, he wrote a book entitled Fur de Lance, a briefing on Soviet scalar electromagnetic weapons. He named the book after the deadly South American pit viper snake, which unexpectedly strikes its prey with great agility and lethal effects. In this book, he indicts the Orthodox Western scientific community for its bureaucratic smugness and arrogance. He compares the current Soviet secret development of psychotronic weapons with U.S. secret development of the atomic bomb. Quote, we have assumed that it certainly could never happen to us and that the secret weapon scenario will never be repeated. On the contrary, it has happened again. Someone else has done it and it has happened to us. The equivalent of about seven Manhattan projects have been poured into Ferdinand's by the Soviets and the program has been successful almost beyond imagination. The eerie weapons are now developed, deployed, and tested. The ambush has been completed. Ferdinand's is coiled and ready to strike. End quote. Side note from me. This makes me wonder about the missile alert that we got that was supposedly a mistake that Hawaii received, how the missile was shot and then somehow the threat was over, just like that. Makes me wonder if, if we might have our own psychotronic uh, psychic weapons in the form of humans, in the form of highly psychic humans. Back to the book. Bearden's book provides a detailed theory with supporting evidence, which he and others who share his convictions have been compiling for years. He has ventured beyond the prevailing concepts of our scientific community to find answers to real paranormal events, which have been occurring around the globe. His evidence, specific dates, times, and places where these weapons have been tested and how they were detected. His Theory of, of scalar electromagnetic waves or electrogravitation and Jules Verne type weapons is overwhelming as well as the ramifications. He notes that, quote, the results of psychotronic research extend into every field of military application, end quote. Almost every weapon system we presently have or are developing is totally vulnerable to scalar EM weaponry. This includes personnel electronics, including fusing and warhead, Explosives, propellants, fuels, ordnance, ships, submarines, torpedoes, aircraft, 
helicopters, missiles, drones, rockets, tanks, armored vehicles, weapon carriers, self-propelled and towed artillery, communications, satellites, radars, command and control, directed energy mines, artillery rounds, and ammunition, and nuclear warheads, etc., end quote. Whether the Soviets have developed all of these weapons is not the crucial point. What is apparent, however, is the tremendous potential threat of psychotronics as an instrument of power. The crucial point, therefore, is that the Soviets apparently are aggressively pursuing research to control this instrument. In 1977, Soviet parapsychology research finally became an issue the Carter administration could not ignore. No matter how skeptical, some officials remained. On June 11th, the KGB arrested Los Angeles Times reporter Robert C. Toth hmm, in Moscow and charged him with obtaining a secret state document which revealed the existence of ongoing research in parapsychology at several laboratories in the Soviet Union. The Soviets admitted for the first time current official Soviet interest in the military potential of parapsychology. This incident focused presidential attention on a science which some of his advisors claimed did not even exist. Carter ordered a new definitive intelligence estimate of Soviet psychic research and its military potential using all the intelligence resources available to the CIA, the first such report ever done at the pinnacle of the U.S. National Security Establishment. The report was completed in 1978, but only partially released under the Freedom of Information Act in 1980. Rather ambiguously, they, quote, found no evidence of a massive, massive, psych, of a massive Soviet psycho warfare, end quote. Nor did the CIA dismiss entirely the most apocalyptic allegations of secret Soviet psi research. The evidence is fragmentary and contradictory at best, the report stated. A June 1983 Congressional Research Service report to Congress says, quote, it is also speculated that the Soviet government is firmly committed to the funding of psi research and that much of this funding variously speculated to amount to tens of millions of dollars. It is directed towards military research, end quote. What makes the Soviet research effort such a threat is the United States' apparent lack of interest. The same report to Congress also mentions that, quote, total funding for psi research in the United States probably does not greatly exceed $500,000 per annum, and most funding originates from private sources and foundations, end quote. Attempts to identify more recent and accurate funding levels have been to no avail. U.S. Research any lack of interest in psychic research in the United States is an outgrowth of personal fears, sensationalism, and restrictive scientific mindsets. We are our own worst enemies. Through cynicism, biased criticism, and ridicule, the scientific community and society as a whole have suppressed exploration of the mind frontier. Greater psychic awareness is the key to opening our minds and discovering hidden treasures. Dr. Roger A. Beaumont, professor of history at Texas A&M University, has published more than 40 articles and three books on military history and strategic studies. In 1982, in a 1982 article in Signal Magazine, he points out, quote, In the West, psychic research has long been tainted by sensationalism and some charlatanism. The dramatic and the absurd overtones of the popular culture aspect of ESP has led even the more conservative elements of the popular press to treat ESP as a novelty. Major centers of ESP research in the West at Utrecht, London, and Duke University have come under suspicion from many scientists. As a result, the researchers have labored to prove an effect which the Soviets accept and attempt to explain and control. End quote. Sorry, quick side note. Sounds to me like our media and our press are largely responsible for us, for our cynicism when it comes to these matters. If this, if this paper is any indication, our issues come from the press and the media, from an ill-informed press and an ill-informed and irresponsible press and media. Back to the paper. 
Dr. Beaumont's comments are certainly proven true when one considers the continued skepticism of the scientific community in view of the extraordinary potential Soviet threat. According to Russell Targ, one of the reasons psi research has suffered is that critics suggest any acceptance of, this, of scientific data in the field of psychic research would be inherently irrational. A survey of America's elite scientists, which elicited 353 responses from 497 council members and committee members of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, was published in June 1982. The study states, quote, although recent studies hint that belief in ESP may be increasing among the general population and among the scientific community, the elite scientific group polled by this study demonstrated the highest level of skepticism of any major group surveyed within the last 20 years, end quote. Also mentioned in this report was a movement started in 1979 that sought to disaffiliate the Parapsychology Association from the AAAS, which was the American Association for the Advancement of Science. It is interesting to note that among this elite group, believers in ESP tend to cite personal experience as ground for their belief. Skeptics tend to cite a priory of reasons as grounds for disbelief. The prevailing concepts and negative peer pressure within the scientific community is best shown by the 1984 award of a $750,000 endowment for parapsychology research to the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. Leading British universities, including Oxford and Cambridge, quote, decided not to apply for the endowment primarily on the grounds that it would throw doubt on the credibility of other research programs, end quote. Obviously, this is an example of the suspicion Dr. Beaumont was talking about. It is an indication that major self-imposed obstacles continue to impede psychic research. They would rather, this is me talking, they would rather go without three quarters of a million dollars back in the 80s rather than just do research on psychic abilities. Fascinating. Back to the paper. The first great battle of any mind race must be fought within ourselves. If each of us becomes more aware and open-minded to the reality of paranormal phenomena, we can learn to use these treasures rather than fear them. This greater psychic awareness has perhaps already begun. A survey by the president of the American Society for Social Psychiatry revealed in 1981 that 58% of medical f faculties polled felt that, quote, understanding of psychic phenomena is important to future graduates of psychiatry programs, end quote, and that the American public accept the reality of psychic phenomena within, with 51% believing in ESP and 37% believing in precognition. The June 1983 Congressional Research Service Report says, quote, All polls of both the public and the scientific community in recent years have yielded evidence of a generally positive attitude towards the existence and relevance of psi phenomena as a class and research into them. The general public accepts the concept of psi, often based on personal experiences, end quote. But given such great controversy within the scientific community, what should be the military attitude? What are the potential military uses and how feasible are they? 13 of the 14 best known parapsychology laboratories in the United States responded to a questionnaire in 1979, giving us part of the answer. Begin quote. Four considered ESP enage so it's espionage with capital ESP at the beginning, possible, five likely. So four of these respondents considered ESP enage possible, five likely, and the remaining four certain. Similar proportions of the researchers believed psychic powers might be used to physically harm, sicken, or kill individuals or to interfere with the operation of physical equipment such as computers. End quote. Ronald McRae, an investigative reporter for Jack Anderson, spent over a year sifting through 
a, quote, sea of conjectures, rumors, and confusion, end quote, studying conflicting reports, competing interest groups, and conjectures of psychic researchers to compile the most accurate record of facts he could find. In his, his 1984 book called Mind Wars, The True Story of Government Research into the Military Potential of Psychic Weapons, provides startling insights into numerous government projects involving psychic functioning. So much so that Professor, Professor Marcelo Truzzi, director of the Center for Scientific Anomalies Research in Ann Arbor, Michigan, said, quote, he has given us enough pieces of the puzzle so that we can now at least see some of the areas filled in enough to make a preliminary assessment and recognize that government psi efforts have been grossly publicly underestimated, end quote. Similarly, Russell Targ and Keith Hareri authored a 1985 national bestseller entitled Mind Race, where they discussed the unclassified portions of over 10 years of government-sponsored psi research at Stanford Research Institute. They note, quote, in laboratories across this country and in many other nations as well, 46 experimental series have investigated remote viewing. 23 of these investigations have reported successful results and produced statistically significant data where three would be expected, end quote. Psy research is definitely alive in the United States and internationally. In 1983, the Fifth International Conference on Psychotronic Research was held in Bratislava, Czechoslovakia. The founder and president of the 15-year-old International Association for Psychotronic Research, or IAPR, was Dr. Zednik Redjak from Czechoslovakia. I'm pretty sure I, I murdered that name. Russell Targ points out that several speakers at this conference expressed, quote, a clear desire for openness and cooperation rather than for developing military uses of psi, end quote. Targ agrees. But I contend that government and the military have a responsibility to determine what kinds of military uses or threats might exist. I'm going to stop there at this and, and pick up next time at the section entitled Potential Military Uses. I do think from now on when I read these, I do think I will add some analysis or some comment here and there in order to bring some humanity to it and also to try to make it more understandable by people who don't regularly use terms and think in these ways. Because if your mind isn't prepared to think this way, or if it hasn't practiced and done this before, then some of these concepts might really fall flat. So in the future, when I read these, I think that I will add some commentary in order to simplify it a little bit, or at least take you into the context where my mind is and why I find this applicable to our lives right now, because these papers are 40, 50 years old and it might seem like they're irrelevant, but they're not. They're part of our history and they're part of the building blocks that brought us to this place where we are right now, where we are highly affected by psychic energy all day long. You notice how people S certain sets and subsets of people will all think very similarly and draw the same conclusions, even if they haven't had the same, received the same data or had the same life experience or have similar genetics, they will still think in very similar ways and they'll pick up what I, you know, certain streams of consciousness and, and ideas and concepts. Um, some people will naturally very will very naturally connect to certain streams of consciousnesses and certain of them are wholly rejected by certain people. And I believe that this is as a result of the stream of consciousness that you have connected your mind to, your awareness to. Um, I picture it as though it would be something akin to um, a, a silver cord being connected at your heart chakra and you spin it like a lasso and you throw it up and you attach to a, a rainbow in the sky. Okay. So of the colors, your silver cord would connect to one and then energetically be tied to that. 
And then all the information generated by that color or that stream is easily downloaded to you because that is the stream that you have willingly and consciously connected to. So I think we see these things all the time. It's why you can try to give someone information. You can give them facts. You can, you can supposedly prove your point, air quotes, with articles and studies, etc. But if someone is not connected to that stream, if, there, if some part of them is not connected to that stream, they are not going to be able to, to understand no matter how much you tell them because our mind is much more psychic there's a, there's a heavy psychic element to our minds that we as a society and according to this paper, avoid, ignore, ridicule. But it is, in my opinion, a very prevailing aspect of our society at this time because people believe what they believe no matter what you tell them. And that indicates to me we are connecting to these streams and we're not all connected to the same stream. So... And I do believe that that is done purposely to cause dissension. And it's also happening because there is a separation of certain types and what I call um, different models of human, human 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, depending on the, the status of your consciousness and how much work you have done to grow it. And this is not an insult if you haven't done the work, it, that doesn't mean anything. It just means that you aren't here for that right now. It's not an insult whatsoever. It just means that particular stream, that experience is not going to benefit you in this run on this planet or in this realm. So you don't connect to it because it doesn't serve you and that's okay. So if when you are in this debate kind of back and forth volley situation with someone that you're arguing with and trying to prove your point, it's probably better just to see that they have not connected to that stream. They are not interested in that experience and this go round for themselves. So disconnect from them and let it go. I want to say one more thing about psychotronics. This, you know, was written, um, 40 years ago, plus this paper, but they are, they talk about the effect of consciousness on electronics. I believe that is another element of what we are experiencing in the ascension, the dissension with our society, our emotions and energetic connections that we form with a person that we're talking to over the internet. Also, that that psychic energy is also connected to the electronic device that you are holding and then transmitted. It's part of the transmission. So I think that we just need to be mindful of where we are spraying our energy and what we're connecting to, how and why. Because our consciousness is affected by the electronics and vice versa. And right now, I believe that those connections are also contributing to the chaos that we are experiencing. So there's so much more to our reality than we have been taught. These papers tell me that our government has known about these matters and these issues for a long, long time. And they failed to put these subjects in any of our curriculum to pursue them in any way. And our media and press continue to ridicule this to this day. They even went as far as trying to interpret the Bible in such a way that anyone who has spirituality or that's connected to this Christian religion would think that this psychic abilities are evil. That is how badly that they don't want us to know and have this information, but it's very easy to overcome that open the internet and read. And I'm trying to do my part to combat that ignorance and bring awareness to this issue by reading these papers and making them more available to you. So that's part one of this paper. 
and I will try to get part two out within the next few days. Please leave me any comments if you think I'm reading too fast, if you can't understand me, if I'm if I'm interrupting the paper too often. Uh, I'm not very good at this whole YouTube thing. Everyone else's videos are so fancy and all that stuff, and mine's literally like a picture and me talking. I'm still trying to figure out how to add music to it. So I welcome any comments as long as you're not a jerk, please, because I don't deserve to be spoken to in a jerky way. And I will, won't speak to you in a jerky way unless you really piss me off. And I don't let people do that because I'm not giving you my energy. I don't know if you're worth the connection, so I'm not wasting it. So thank everyone for listening and I'll talk to you again soon.